You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and right here, Jared Mounts. And we got a really great guest uh, again on this show in studio. Yeah, we met uh, (laughs) Jeff uh, Green here. I met him a while back, a long time ago. Uh, We did a little little activity outside and a little seminar deal, and you came down and promoted your guide service. Uh, We ran into Jeff also at the Berkeley Springs youth fishing uh show up there in berkeley springs Mm -hmm. gym the weather was terrible uh but they had a good showing and we had some people come through um uh, he's from mount airy maryland for great calls like we'll go i'd like to go back every year just because yeah uh, and i just saw a recent post come across where those youth were out fishing uh qualifier and so uh, jeff's from mount airy maryland former police officer thank you for your time with that appreciate it um is now guiding um in an area that I'm not as familiar with. But uh, before we talk about that, Jeff, for those that didn't see the Berkey Springs and they don't know who you are, tell us who you are and how you got into fishing and and what you're doing now. Well, my name is Jeff Green. I um, own and operate a guide service called Shallow Water Fishing Adventures um, out of um, uh, Poolsville, Maryland. Um, I go from Poolsville all the way up to about Brunswick, Maryland on the Upper Potomac Hmm. River. I... uh, I have gone out of and guided out of uh, areas like uh, Shepherdstown, West Virginia as well. Okay. But most of the time I stay south of that. Um, I also guide on the Susquehanna River, the Juniata River, and I forgot um, the uh, Monocacy River, which mm. is a tributary to the Upper Potomac. Hmm. I also guide up in that as well. Hmm. Um, I'm uh, born and raised in Montgomery County, Maryland, in a town called uh, or a city called Gaithersburg, Maryland. Yeah. But the, the area I lived in was called Quince Orchard Valley. Um, it's just a little, a little type of, you know, area in Gaithersburg. I went to, uh, Quince Orchard High School Hmm. and, um, I, uh, went to college in West Virginia, went to Glenville State College, which is now called Glenville State University. There you go. Um, in, uh, Gilmore County, West Virginia. So, uh, from there, I, um, graduated from college. I became a policeman on, on, uh, worked out of the first district on the Washington D.C. Police Department. Wow. I was a policeman for about twelve years, and found guiding, and never looked back. Wow! And I've been fishing my entire life, um, on the Upper Potomac River and the tributaries of the Potomac River, the Seneca Creek, and any other place I could uh, get mm-hmm. in the water, mm-hmm. even the the ponds and even the small lakes that were in the area. But um, I always went back to the river. I love the river. That's cool. Um, the Potomac River, no matter what, is my home water. I, I don't um, consider any other river better than that river. I love it. That's cool. There is something about a river, mm-hmm. too. I mean, it's I fish both waters, but a river, something special about a yeah. river. It's always so. evolving. It's always yes. changing. Mm-hmm. What finally made you make the switch for, from doing your job as, as a cop to finally, like, pulling the trigger and be like, I want to do this. Like, was it, was that a hard to take? Was it a quick decision to do it? Or did no, it take I a was while? a second generation police officer. My father was a policeman. My uncle was a policeman. I even had an aunt that was on the job. She was a police officer in Washington, DC. Wow. I have an aunt and uncle that were retired FBI agents. Um, so it was in my family and, uh, it wasn't easy for me to leave, but it wasn't for me anymore. I, I just, I, I just didn't want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, I started guiding, and uh, luckily it started picking up. I started getting more and more customers, and at some point in time, I had to say see ya, mm-hmm. and uh, I never looked back. Well, you're probably, you're probably. I'm guessing you probably. I don't know if it's right to say you're happier, but it's probably. Oh no, I, I am. I'm, I'm a lot happier. A lot yeah. stressed, less stressful. Less, yeah, less, less stress. uh, <laughs> you know, but but you should be expected. I, I grew up in that environment. I I, right. I knew what it was all about. Right. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I I I grew up in the Washington D.C. Police Department. Right. But. It wasn't for me anymore. So I. Yeah. Well, good for you for making the switch because yeah, yeah. that isn't easy to do to make a career yeah. switch, like you're saying. And then, but, but, you know, hats off to you for doing it because I think a lot of times we look at people and say, man, that must be nice. You know, you no. get to fish all the time and you can be a guy. But my point I is. I love though, being a policeman. Well, mm-hmm. you, yeah. But the point is that you made a decision and you did it. Like it's easy you yeah. know, for people to say, well, yeah. Yeah, it must be nice. 
Like you did it. Like anybody <laughs> has, we all have the opportunity oh, to yeah. do it. Yeah. But it's those that do it that make the step, step out and do it. Like, hats off to you no, for it's making hard, that because it's not I, easy I come, to do. Yeah, I come from three generations of, of government, and I have mm -hmm. like a couple generations of the CIA stuff. And when I tell them like, "What do you want to do?" I want to talk about fishing, and it's like <laughs> not necessarily. Yeah, it's, like, it's, good it's, luck. yeah, but but the fact is like you do it and you commit to yes. it, and that's hard to do is to make that jump. Right. You know what I mean? Like to make that yeah. leap to that that next thing. So I give so, you credit for, yeah. for stepping out and doing it and, and making it work for you. Yeah. And then what? Did you have any mentors in the fishing? Like what really got you into guiding it at first? Did you like? Well, no. Um, when I was a kid, my parents always took me fishing. Oh, okay. I always wanted to go fishing, but uh, my grandfather was the biggest uh, influence. Okay, he was a uh, pretty good fisherman, and uh, he fished on Grand Lake in uh, oh, cool. Oklahoma. So every summer, I'd go out there, and I'd uh, I'd fish with him. That's a cool place summer. to grow up. <laughs> yeah, and um, l um, luckily, him and my grandmother um, managed. Um, a resort and motel that's on the cool. lake called Honey Creek Resort and Motel. Dude, oh, that's cool. <laughs> which is so cool. cool. Yeah. Big time guys would come through there. And they'd, they'd stay there, you know, the big time <sighs> tournament guys. Yeah. Uh, one of them was uh, Jimmy Houston, used to stay there. Oh, that's, that's, wow. time. Oh, that's so cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, I learned how to crappie fish. Um, he was no nonsense, though. You didn't go out and play around. He. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't. He wouldn't take you if if that was the case. He'd How old were you off. at this time? Oh man, I was um, when he started probably really taking me out on just him and me. I was probably about nine or ten at the That's time. That's cool. I look back on it. He and, says uh, no nonsense. So no, no absolute yeah, no nonsense. You're there to fish. He's the kind of person if you caught a fish and that's not the fish you were trying to catch, mm -hmm. or you were just joking <laughs> around, that wasn't funny. <laughs> you know, it was it was it was in a. Um, we're crappy fishing today. Don't, yeah. Yeah, 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 crappie, yeah. white bass, uh, and he was a cat fisherman. Interesting. That's crazy. So, yeah, that is yeah. cool though. That and that's a good question because we all have that different influence. Oh, yeah, we have that. Grand Lake's ones. awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I, I, that's one of those bucket list items. I've always wanted to go out there to the Zora mm -hmm. Lakes and actually try it. But the fact you got to grow up there, I mean, yeah. that's one. Easy I, and way. in the summer times, I'd go out there and. Uh, yeah, I mean he he knew uh, we'd go we'd go, down below the dam and fish. Um, I mm. think it's in Disney, Disney, Oklahoma. It's called. That's mm. where that um, the dam system is. And uh, uh, whenever they lift the gates up, they let a lot of water out, and mm. then eventually the water comes down. And there's fish trapped everywhere, and all these little creeks mm. and oh, so cool areas. And we'd we'd fish there, and then we'd go on the main lake, and there was areas where we'd wade and fish for um, crappie and white bass. Hmm. hmm, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that was really. Neat. And then I'd catch bait with them too. He'd take me out and catch bait, and uh, he thought it was funny at night because we'd catch crawdads. Mm -hmm. And um, we'd, we'd use uh, these old lanterns, and we'd look for um, – oh, the crawdads come out. Yeah. People, I don't think people realize this, right. but they come out at night. Mm -hmm. They come out from under the rocks, and they expose themselves, and you can reach in and grab them. But the ones you want to grab are the ones they call peelers. You don't want to grab the ones that have hard shells because they'll pinch you. Mm -hmm. And he thought it was funny when I'd reach down and grab one that wasn't yeah. a peeler because <laughs> I didn't know the difference. <laughs> And the big one would grab me and pinch me. He thought and you'll fun. never forget that. Though. No, you no, don't forget that experience it. Of, uh... No, he um, he used to sell bait too a little bit, hmm. m many, 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 many years ago. Mm -hmm. So speaking of crayfish, like what what do you see right now on the on the Potomac River, especially from you know, the the split where the Shenandoah and the Potomac meet all the way down? What is the primary forage that that the smallmouth there are feeding on now? Is it crayfish? Is it shiners? Like what is it that they're it's, uh, feeding on? Smaller fish, bait fish, you would call them. Mm -hmm. I mean, smallmouth can eat anything that they think they can put in their mouth. Mm -hmm. So it, they don't care what it is, mm -hmm. but they like um, they like bait fish. And then in the summertime, at, at some point in time, middle of summer, you'll start catching them, and they'll just be throwing up uh, crawdads. Mm -hmm. hmm. Right. Um, everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's just and and bugs. Sometimes they'll they'll uh, spit up a bunch of bugs in the mm -hmm. water when you have them hooked by the boat, mm -hmm. and they look like uh, popcorn kernels. Hmm. And uh, hmm. but the two major ones are bait. I would say number one is bait fish, and then the crawdads. Okay. Crayfish people call them too. Okay. Yeah, because I know we're talking about the Susquehanna, where there's like different types of like yeah, crayfish, crayfish yeah, yeah, uh, and stuff like from, that. From what I understand on the Susquehanna, I'm I'm a lot more in tune with the yeah. uh, Upper Potomac. I guide on the Susquehanna. Uh, we catch fish up there, but um, they're loaded with crawdads. Mm -hmm. They have crayfish everywhere, mm -hmm. all over. Yeah, it's just weird, like from one river system to the other, even though they're, they're pretty close, but they're mm -hmm. completely different too. Mm -hmm. It's just so weird how that is. Mm -hmm. But like, I mean, what I'm really interested in is because like I remember growing up and floating really from like Harpers Ferry down 
like the river is a lot different. The Potomac, when it's just purely the Potomac versus where the Shenandoah and Potomac feed into it, that river changes a lot. Just like oh. the size and everything. And Helgramites. A, a lot of yeah. a lot of Helgramites mm-hmm. they eat. Um, mm-hmm. I've seen them even in the dead of winter. Oh really? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they uh, they like those a lot. And the small catfish they call Mad Toms. You've ever heard of those? Yeah. They love those too. Yeah, but there's yeah, mad times, yeah. I'm telling you. We've talked about that. that Every river guy year. that's come on is... Um, <laughs> yeah. And Stone stone Cat or Stone Fly was another stone yeah. cat name I for believe Stone Cat, yeah. similar. But uh, but yes, that's and there's a lot of people still don't know know about you know that forage. I've seen them in their... Um, I have no idea how they catch them because uh, the, o- the ones I've always seen are always head first down the uh, fish's throat. Correct. And you'll see its tail sticking out. That's Correct. how I know it's a mad time. Yeah. That's just crazy. Because until we started this podcast, I had no idea how big that was. Like yes. that's the through line of all the big yes. smallmouth eat yep. those mad toms. Yep. And the elger might, you know, I went to Shepherd and it was Shepherd College and now Shepherd University, the college <laughs> you were talking about. Um, but right below Dam Four, I can remember wading in that water in the fall, and we would and I've probably mentioned this before, but you know, take pick the rocks up off the bottom and catch the live helger mites, get them right behind the, the mm-hmm. pinchers, they mm-hmm. all got pinchers, and just hook them and just I mean I mean, I, I remember one trip, it was, it was the moon had, was out. I mean, it got dark, and we're still fishing, you know, and still catching smallmouth on these, you know, helger mites. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, and they were live, but they make imitation too. So, another great, great... Uh, it's a good bait. Great mm-hmm. bait, especially in the summertime. Those are uh, those are great baits in the summertime. Mm-hmm. Any, anything anything that mimics a, uh, yes. um, a helger mite helger mite is a great bait. And if you hook that... And you throw it out, and I've used it on every river, but throw it out. It won't even get to the bottom, and it's they're on mm-hmm. it. Yeah. You know, and they, sometimes it's going to be smaller ones, but you know, typically summertime, that's what you're going to get. I find they that they hammer it. those, um, you know, the smallmouth hit those in the summertime, that is. The experience is they hit the crayfish and those helgramites. They hit them hard mm-hmm. like like they mm-hmm. know they need to. Right. Because those things, that, like almost like they, they know they, they can kind of defend themselves, mm-hmm. and they nail them. And that they, is uh, that is weird how they do like a jig yes. bite where like they don't hit necessarily like, you know the classic Correct. jig bite where it just goes limp and then you can like slack line them, but then versus like a swim bait or a jerk bait where they'll just tear the rod out of your yeah. hand like they know how to attack baits differently. And then the entomology of that that as it grows as it goes up to goes through the different stages you know fly fishermen will tell you and then it gets to the surface and they'll grow wings and fly off so then it, on the surface that's called a whole Dobson different flies. Dobson flies yeah mm-hmm. i mean big but but to your point back about the bugs too they're eating whatever they're opportunistic so whatever's there they're gonna eat they gotta I mean, eat i, I so. believe the um i mean they're the most plentiful fish in the river but the smallmouth are mm-hmm. the most aggressive fish on that on, on yes. the river or probably mm-hmm. in any river system oh, that they inhabit mm-hmm. uh by far Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. that's why guys like catch you know fish for them so much because they do they really literally like a big large mouth. Don't get me wrong, they're fun to catch, but mm-hmm. they they once you hook them and, they, and sometimes they'll fight, but a lot of times they'll just kind of they're just big and you know they like have big to be lunker, real big to but really a get a small yeah, mouth is like they're fight off of them. they're darting, they're coming out of the water doing backflips. I mean they're and if you get a, a good one, it's well, yeah, and it's, it's where, in the current. And it's where I you mean, catch them. It's kind of like what Fishhawk said with the trout. Mm-hmm. Like you 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 catch large mouth in like this scummy weed covered mm-hmm. pond. A smallmouth, you are at the Conakajig Creek or the Potomac mm-hmm. River, mm-hmm. and like you, you have a backdrop that mm-hmm. goes with where you catch right. them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that is also into their appeal. Correct. Um, and go, getting back to the Potomac River, like, do do you feel like the Potomac River, it fishes the same whether you're at Dam Four, Dam Five, or all the way down, you know, near uh, where the Harpers Ferry meets? Like, does the river fish differently at every section, or is it kind of fish the same all the way I through? I think it, it fishes the same. Um, I think some people can use different techniques. Like I think up above Dam Five, where it kind of feels like it pulls mm-hmm. up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, the river's still free flowing. Mm-hmm. We talk about a dam, but they're like low, low water dams, I believe they're called, mm-hmm. and it's it's still free free fr- uh, flowing. But um, that water backs up, and I think some people use that um, technique called drop shotting, mm-hmm. and they catch smallmouth that way. But mm-hmm. other than that, no, it's the same baits and um, uh, the same type of action. Okay. Mm-hmm. With with those baits. You mentioned the Monocacy, and I have this up on Google Google Maps. Like, how big, like, Maps so, doesn't do adjust. It's like, how big is the Monocacy? So, the Monocacy right? meets literally right at the Maryland Pennsylvania line, and I forget the name of the two creeks that come together. Okay. And they form the Monocacy River. The Monocacy River is roughly about 50 miles long. Oh, wow. Give or take. It's, it's, uh, it's not huge, mm-hmm. but I mean, it's a decent, mm-hmm. decent body of water, and um, <clears throat> it has big fish in it. 
Can you like what's the width? Um, I mean, is it is it wide as the Potomac? Or no, really no. Shallow? I bet like, you. Um, um, it's like Antietam Creek. Or a yeah, I mean, you that? could uh, you could throw a baseball from one one side to the other. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. I've yeah. never ever heard of people actually fishing without a problem. You could you could take a baseball and throw it from um, one shoreline to the other. It does it get a lot of fishing pressure? Are a lot of people fishing it or no? Sure, in the summertime. It summertime. Does. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it's also kind of forgotten. Mm-hmm. Used to be really well known for at least what I remember as a kid, and that's another tributary I used to fish is the is the Monocacy. It used to get a uh, people used to talk about it a lot for its small mouth um, thirty years ago. So, hmm. but uh. Uh, it's a great place to try to catch a big fish. Because I know the Monocacy and Tinum Creek I've heard of, like mm-hmm. these are these little places that, mm-hmm. of course, there's not a lot of boat ramps, so mm-hmm. people just like don't hear about them. Mm-hmm. It was so crazy. It's from like Great Falls up to where Harper's Ferry is. That part of the Potomac, no one ever talks about, which is really mm-hmm. weird to me. Because like, I think that's where it has the most potential because not only is it not talked about, but there's not a lot of boat ramps, like too. Not compared yeah. to like the Susquehanna. It's kind of a do-it-yourself type of it deal. Is. Yeah. There's boat ramps there. They're, they're very good facilities. Um. They're, but they're just cement slabs. Mm-hmm. But there's there's parking. There's reasonable parking at pretty much all of them, and there's uh, facilities there. Um, but yeah, there's no boat docks. Uh, your boat's gonna be it's gonna constantly be muddy because mm-hmm. you have to um, step on the shoreline to get in your boat. Um, but it's all fresh water from from Great Falls up. That's kind of where it, I guess the um, tidal water stops. Yeah. So. It's uh, and then with Harper's Ferry or White White's Ferry, I think it's White's Ferry. Like with with that gone, like that, I know the Maryland side that had a fantastic boat ramp right there. But now that that thing shut down, like that's awesome. I believe people pressure. are still using it. The boat there's ramp? A, there's a restaurant at White the White's Ferry on the Maryland Grill, side, right? On the on the Maryland yeah, side, yeah. Um, and uh, it's pretty good food, by the way. I like. I sometimes try take, <laughs> it. It really is. But uh, they have a pretty good boat ramp. Yeah, but it, it's it's not running anymore. The ferry, I don't mm-hmm. I don't know if it ever will again. I've I've heard it will, but they still get customers at that little restaurant, and it's still a destination because it's still historic. Mm-hmm. Now, and how far river? How now? I know where you launched like, the Brunswick type of area, like, and those ramps are so, sometimes are good, sometimes are bad, depending on how much water is in the river. Oh yeah. H- how far do you actually run down, generally speaking, or do you try to try to go up? You know, I, I would estimate. I've never really looked on a map, but I go from Seneca Creek, mm-hmm. which is called Riley's Lock, uh, which is just above Dam Two. Dam Two no longer exists. If you look on a map, um, some maps you might be able to see it historic, like an historical map. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just to, just below that, I believe it's Violet's Lock. Hmm. But right there. That's where Dam Two would have been, but from there north, so probably twenty five miles of river. Okay, that's just that's so beautiful. Good and then gracious. if you um if you if you take a river and then you break it up from shoreline to shoreline, Correct. that's fifty miles of of water wow. mm-hmm. from one side to the other because one side might be better than the other, um, the structure wise and everything. Mm-hmm. And that's, what you said is water. so important too is maps, and I, I've said this before, and I used to teach, you know outdoor education and talking about map reading and just the idea of a map, you know, and what is available to, so it's still amazing to me. And I don't mind when people come in and say, where can I fish? Where, where, you know, with technology, you know, I guess maybe not everybody's willing to go on and do this, but do a little bit, a little bit of homework goes a long way. Well, I Um, I look at maps. I I still look at them today. Yes. I pretty much know where all the tributaries are on the, uh, on that stretch of river that I fish. And to your point, like these tributaries that are dumping into the main bodies of water, and then like right around here it might be a Peckin Creek or which is still, you know, dumps in over there. But any type or Juniata on on the uh Susquehanna or like when we're going down to uh the Chickahominy, you know, when I started looking at all these you want to stick kind of the main drag, mm-hmm. the main river, and you know they know a Dyson Creek, you know, you go up that or river. But then you look at the and how far back they go and how much water oh, there is. Oh my and to goodness, your yeah. point, there's fish in there. And so like you go by and you're like, that's just a small little creek. But to your point, how far back is it going? And those fish swimming are gonna mm-hmm. swim back in yeah. there. And there you can find some good honey holes. So there's a um in my experience fishing the, the river, when the water gets high enough and it and then at whatever whatever level that might be, and it pushes them to the shoreline, mm-hmm. it'll push them up into those creeks. Right. With my experience, I found, um, and I've been told uh, throughout the years, if you follow that river and you go, or a tributary, 
and you go all the way up into it as far as you can usually go. Mm -hmm. um, these smaller tributaries, not like uh, mm -hmm. Monocacy where it just keeps going and mm -hmm. going and going, but mm -hmm. these smaller creeks. And if you go up into it, I don't know, even a quarter of a mile, and it stops and, it, and there's just nothing but um, mm -hmm. uh, rocks and ripple ripples or, yeah. and stuff, uh, usually the fish will push as far up till they'll push up to that. Mm -hmm. And then you can go up there, you stop right there and you start fishing down. Gotcha. Mm. And you'll find hot spots. You'll find mm -hmm. spots where they're, mm -hmm. they're loaded with fish, mm -hmm. but the water level dictates all that. Correct. Mm -hmm. And if there's no water in there, there's no mm -hmm. fish in there. Like, and, like that. There's no, there's not that volume of fish that you're looking for. Correct. Now in saying that there's a lot of guys too, that's what they're looking for. They go as far up and back and they're going to go as shallow as they can. Yeah. There's a lot of anglers that are just geared that way. That's how they like to fish. I think others kind of stay on the main, but again, trying to find that, you know, balance. Or, yeah. That's I believe, spot. I also believe though, as the water falls, because the water comes out of the tributaries mm -hmm. faster than it um, drops on the, on this main stem of the right. Potomac. Mm -hmm. So you have to hit them sometimes. Like let's say there's a, there's a creek that I know of uh, that if the water on the gauge at Edwards Ferry is reading like ten feet, if you can hit that that tributary, mm -hmm. um, you can take it back to a to a tunnel. Mm -hmm. and the train goes over top mm -hmm. of, and in the summertime there's fish all up in there. Interesting, yeah. yeah. And it's it's fed by springs too, so that water clears up a lot faster, right? Than the ma the main stem of the Potomac River would. How much does current flow? Uh really factor into it before you go out with a trip like are you on your computer in the morning before you pick out people to be like okay this is the current flow so this is what my oh yeah i mean uh like. it's at some point in time you, you can't for safety reasons you're not going to go out there yeah but um the highest i've put in on the uh, potomac is somewhere around 12 feet 12 feet I'll do it. okay and um to be honest with you the higher the water is the safer the river is as mm. long as that debris there's a point to where when the water crests and it, it stops rising and mm -hmm. it starts it starts to fall, mm -hmm. you have to wait another 24 to 48 hours for all those trees and debris to mm -hmm. come come down because you don't want to be on the river when there's debris on the river. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. But after it clears up, then you hit the river. And, um, and I have to go and I have to – I can't just guess. I have to physically go to the river and check these tributaries. Mm-hmm. And if I can tell that the water color is different from the main river, that the main river is brown and the water color has a different, it looks mm, different better. Mm -hmm. it, it could still look brown, but mm -hmm. it just looks better mm -hmm. than the Potomac itself. There's probably fish in it. Okay. Uh, we could probably fish it with no problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where do they spawn? Like on the Potomac River, like what is their perfect conditions? What are they looking for? Because I know like in a lake, what you'd look for. Generally well, speaking, you're, you're it, looking for really um, anything that has a current break. They'll, they'll spawn in the middle of the river. Okay. On these uh, these scrub islands, mm -hmm. but you have to have uh, a hard surface that 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 real small gravel that like mm -hmm. pea gravel, mm -hmm. um, with uh, just a lot of rocks. Okay. And um, usually you'll find them. There's also trees breaking the current too, but anywhere where there's a current break and there's probably more than about a foot of water. Okay. So okay, how mm -hmm. much do they like travel? Like if they have a wintering hole, are they staying pretty close to that wintering hole when they spawn? Or are they like are they moving up river a lot? Do you have to really follow no, them I, back I and think, forth? I think they move. I think they move more than than um, than uh, you would guess. Mm -hmm. Really, okay. I think they move several miles at times. Okay, that's been the up general consensus. River. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I've heard that mm -hmm. on the Shenandoah, same thing. How much? Because it's a ghost moving. town. Sometimes you'll get into a spot. And you're like, we're gonna catch fish here. Yeah, no one's home. Mm -hmm. And then you go up the river several miles and there's fish hmm. you know so that's been a repetitive thing i've been hearing yeah, yeah. it's just weird to think about how in my experience i believe they move a lot yeah like i like we were talking about um before the show they'll move with the gauge reading that two inches of water has dropped huh and they'll leave holes so is there like interesting so when you're going out to before you take out a client um, do you have an idea based on how much it drops, like where they're going to move? Or is it like, I have to get on the water and just take a look at the conditions to make that decision? Or is there stuff you can do at home before you go out? To, no, to I just make prepare at home. Okay. Um, because the water, uh, eventually it's just going to keep dropping. And I think as the water falls, especially in the wintertime, the, the conditions for catching the fish deteriorate. Okay. They, 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 they start getting harder. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. I mean when I say deteriorate. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking like the water quality or anything. Just yeah. mm -hmm. the fishing conditions deteriorate. Mm -hmm. And um, they start to spread out all over the river. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. believe on the Potomac River, sometimes if the water's shallow enough and like cold water, man, I think they're out in the middle of the river. Hmm. 
And I've seen them out in the middle of the river before, mm-hmm. in real clear water. And they're tucked under, under rocks, next to logs, anywhere there's a current break. Mm-hmm. And I've got this, this winter, I caught a few right out in the middle of the water where you, or middle of the river where you'd never guess they'd be. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes fishing so hard. We keep talking in, in thinking about the difference between a lake, you know, and a river and how much they move, almost like a salmon, how you talk about, it. you hear yeah. salmon, how far they'll run um or even out in the ocean i mean these fish migrate um but just it does it makes it hard uh because every day changes uh with maybe within the day it changes yeah, and it so does. just being able to um move with that and and move with them and find them um and not to your point not limit yourself just to the bank like pretty much bank to bank i mean they're going to be somewhere in there mm-hmm. but then mm-hmm. also you know traveling you know several yeah. miles up or down uh, to pinpoint those fish, um, uh, don't limit yourself. Um, but I still, because they're swimming is blowing my mind because it's like, you know, they could like say one, they could be slammed here, but then within 15 and 10 minutes, they could be going up to feed shallow it's fascinating and how then much turn back or move mm-hmm. up like you're saying. And so it's, we caught one last summer. I picked up guys by White's Ferry and we, we went down to this one Island and we were at the back of the Island where the water hits it and goes around. And there were these ripples. And this guy threw out, talking about, you know, you know type, like, uh, how shallow they'll be in. Mm-hmm. I kid you not. This fish, it was a big, it was a big small mouth. Mm-hmm. And it was, um, the water couldn't have been more than, it was less than a foot of water. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. somewhere probably around eight inches. Wow. And he threw this whopper plopper out. And he started bringing it through the ripples. I saw the fish come up. Through the ripples, his back was out of the water, and he hit the and he hit the lure. That is freaking. And he nice. almost like came up out of the water mm-hmm. and went on top of it when he hit it. Mm-hmm. I'd never seen that before. I mean, he came out of the water for that for that lure. Mm. And it's, that's so true so too. Big fat, big bass sometimes will be shot like yeah. you're saying, mm-hmm. shallow and back up against the bank. I can remember even canoeing, and one one in particular, I was throwing a tube, but I got hung up on the bank, so I had to go closer and get it off and then while i was there i thought well i'll just flip under this tree right here and bam you know but if i'd have stayed in the middle and just been casting i wouldn't have hit that spot Mm -hmm. that close to the bank it just so happened i was there but you know sometimes finding pinpointing those those spots and areas you know Mm -hmm. it will hold fish don't our eyes will say that's not deep enough for a fish but to your point i also had another one where i was floating down i used to always cast to the right i was going down through riffles Always cast the right, always cast the right, because that was a deeper water and had some mm-hmm. good cuts and stuff. Over to the left, it looked like it was very, very shallow, and it was shallow. But one particular day, I thought, I've never thrown over there. So I threw a buzz bait, top water in the summertime, about the third crank, bam, and it must have been a hole or depression mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, yeah when the water gets was, real low in the summertime, yeah. I look for depressions in the river. Yes. And you'll see clear water, and then it'll turn green, and it'll yep. come back clear yep. again. And the fish, there, um, more times than not, we just sitting, sitting in that in hole. There. That's and right. Usually, there's more than one, and right. just hanging out in there. Right. So you'll you'll catch one, and if you come back up there as you're floating, you'll come back Correct. up and you'll hit it again, and then there's another yeah. one. Yeah. That, and that's the thing about the river. You can't mm. rule anything out. No, no. you can't. It's, it's speaking of like you know the shallow water and stuff. How do you navigate? Are you basing it just on maps, old experience? Um, are you using like the Lawrence mapping, things like that? Is there good mapping of of the of the river, or like how do you navigate it safely? Uh, just from experience, if, mm-hmm. if I'm going to pour uh, part of a river, if it's the Potomac or the uh, Susquehanna or the Monocacy or the Juniata that I'm not um, real comfortable in and I know the water's shallow, I run real slow. Okay. And then once I've mm-hmm. gone through there a few times um, and I know where there's larger rocks or where there's places where there can be in a jet boat, you can run in inches of water. Mm-hmm. And, uh, once um, I get used to that area, I can get up on plane. What's the run. What's the most gnarly river? Um, there's a. You think? Oh, you mean the, the it, it, which Which one puckers you up the most? Which oh, river the to Susquehanna run? River. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, that that river. I believe that river. Um, from what I see from the uh, gauges, when you read the um flow mm-hmm. rate, uh-huh. it runs about two times faster than the Potomac does at mm-hmm. any given time. Wow, yeah. I, that's it, crazy. That river's rolling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh, I never even knew that. Yeah, yeah that's, you gotta have a lot of respect for the Susquehanna River Susquehanna, when you're operating yeah. a boat on it. Probably why they call it the mighty Susquehanna. Yeah, yeah. It is, it's putting some water out. I've heard guys talk about it, joke about it. They say it's a mile wide and a foot deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah so. I mean, that's the one thing, too. I, I've only driven across it. Like, that place is massive, like, mm-hmm. the width wise. Yeah. 
But then, and then when you're fishing the Shenandoah, like, dude, that thing's like lazy looking. Like, it's yes. not moving at all. <laughs> and then you got to be careful on um, rivers like that too, because if the water's not moving fast enough, sometimes those rocks won't show themselves, mm -hmm. and you'll hit them. Okay. Even, I mean, they're literally just under the surface, mm -hmm. just a little bit, that's, or a little bit of wind, a yeah. little yeah. bit of wind on the. Yeah. Oh, well, if there's a lot of wind and yeah. it's shallow, it doesn't matter which river you're on. It's 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 downright dangerous, and uh, I'll. I'll, I won't go out and I won't guide if it's that low and if mm -hmm. it's real windy because uh, no matter how well you know the river you don't always go the same way when you're going up the river mm -hmm. you go in the, in the general area and you run the river but you can't see those rocks mm -hmm. and it's totally different like I said growing up canoeing like coming down a river I got really good at reading a river yeah. and the seams and the V downward V's and uh -huh. just you know you, you learn to navigate that and you learn to uh, even though the one episode we we of course, the I didn't kayak, wrap, yeah, kayak yeah. wrapped around a tree, but <laughs> the canoe. Uh, story. But anyway, it's a lot different on a jet boat going up river mm -hmm. as opposed to going down river, and then being able to navigate on that moving water with a. I'm assuming you have a stick steer. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm 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 up in front. Yeah, you're up in front, but yep. still coming down though. Like you have to be the. You can't just turn on a dime. Like you're floating yeah. and you're moving. You got to have some speed. So it's not like you can like in a canoe yeah. i can kind of steer it and paddle it's and i can speed back in out which you're going speed to, at which yeah. you're going and then be yeah. able to hit those so i you know i would venture if if you got it to your point you gotta have experience yeah well, it, it's just experience. a matter of out. um uh learning how to read the river right and um i think you can teach someone but they have to learn for themselves Correct. too Right, because every year it seems like I find a new rock somewhere mm -hmm. on the Potomac and River. I think that's right. that's because we were talking earlier before we started recording about like you 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 have people that go out with you that have river boats but they're afraid to use it. Yeah, you almost need to subconsciously mm -hmm. know if you're buying a jet boat, you will hit mm -hmm. a rock. It's mm -hmm. going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, and you and can't be afraid here's here's of a that. tip operating a, a jet boat. You know, as long you know, as long as it's not completely out of the water, mm -hmm. and you know. If, if it's just under the surface or you come up on some ripples, you can't let off the gas. Correct. When you let off the gas, the boat squats. And when it squats down, Correct. you're going to do more damage mm -hmm. that way than if you just hit it up on plane. Mm -hmm. um, there's times where I've, I've uh, bumped stuff going on plane and it sounds bad. Yeah. But you can't, you look at it later yeah. and there's nothing there. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, usually the rocks, if you're going down river, are facing that way. Correct. But, um, and you got to commit to it. You can't. Mm -hmm. you can't no, yeah. Once you go, to have... and once you get in shallow water, yes. there's a, there's an area where I can run on the Potomac, and I know when, when the gauge is reading a certain um, level and it's real low, I can get back behind this island. But there's a certain way I go, and um, you can uh, if if the water's low enough, you can hear underneath the boat me hitting the um, mm -hmm. the uh, gravel. Oh yeah, you can hear the gravel coming up a little yep. bit. But in those areas, you can't let off in those areas. Mm -hmm. You got to keep you going, keep, yeah. And you, you got to trust that that boat yes. will stay up on plane and uh, yes, do its job. I was in an inboard jet one time going up, and I don't know, maybe twenty, probably thirty mile an hour or something. But I can remember when he banked banked it left. I remember <clears> looking down and seeing the to your point the gravel, and I was thinking, man, if I was in a canoe, I would literally be dragging right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's crazy, but, but you have to know yeah. those areas yes. to go through them. Yeah. yeah. And I've over the years I've gotten you comfortable. Learned that, yeah. And um. I understand where to go. Mm -hmm. That's right. But, and, yeah. but you, you can't let It doesn't let off. happen overnight. No. But it also, to your point, it goes back to understanding these river gauges, levels, but and still looking at it, but also knowing if you if once you do it enough, you'll learn and you'll know, even though there's different rocks, you'll still know those rocks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll, you'll know, like you say, that general roadmap of where to go. You learn a river better. To take and, yeah. If you want to start learning a river, if you can get on it while it's high mm -hmm. and then you keep hitting it, Mm -hmm. Over and over and over again, mm -hmm. as it falls, mm -hmm. you, you'll you'll notice the change and and you'll mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. right. you become a lot more comfortable with it. And, and mm -hmm. I think knowing that flow rate is the thing. Whether it was the Travis Eden interview all the way till now, it's like getting on your computer and learning to match up what the flow rate on the computer says to mentally what to expect mm -hmm. when you get out there. Correct. That you know, if it's at this amount, okay, this is what I can expect out on the mm -hmm. water. That's so important compared mm -hmm. to when I was a kid. I go kayaking and stuff. I just show up, not knowing what the right. hell I'm going to experience. Right. So it's yeah, just, I don't know. Um, the guys that get on kayaks, um, they have to be very um, aware of how fast the water's moving. Probably, mm -hmm. yeah, because it can get real. If you dangerous have a motor on your boat, you don't really have to worry about it too much because mm -hmm. you can get through it. Yeah, and then knowing like how where you can run at what time depending mm -hmm. on the depth and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, what type of boat are you running right now? 
I run a Sea Arc jet boat. Okay. Uh, with a um, Mercury outboard on the back of it, jet motor. Okay. And how big is it? It's a sixty forty. It's called sixty forty. Okay. Yeah, it's a smaller jet boat, but uh, it's always gotten the job done. Yeah. And um, I it's a uh, it's just a good boat, mm-hmm. and um, it drafts real real high in the water. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can't believe sometimes when I have um, uh, there's me and two other guys, mm-hmm. larger people on the boat, mm-hmm. and um, we're drifting in the summertime. And I see these rocks. Mm. I can't believe and you're cringing because you're thinking I, I'm gonna hit. But well, you're, you're you looking right and you're over. like, ah, you know. So I pull the trolling mm. motor up and I mm. tell the guys to take a seat. We go right over top of them yep. and never even touch them. Yep. It's incredible. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. it's such a mental thing. Like unless you grow up doing it, like I could see where if you're like flying in from California, you buy a jet boat, it, it'd make you pucker unless mm. you're like used to being able to float over these rocks or, mm. or being able to navigate this. Cause mm. compared to like a Lake Anna, besides maybe a drunk jet skier, you don't have mm. to worry about hitting like massive boulders. Mm. Um, it's just, it's a completely different mindset that you yeah, really need to have. <laughs> There's certain areas and I'll tell the guys when we're going through, I'm like, Hey, look down. And I'll, I'll look back at him. I'll say, look down. And uh, you can see their faces. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> just absolutely like, like Oh Good. shit. And, and they, and you. once you're done, they start laughing. They're like, we just went through that. <laughs> Yeah. So habitat wise, like what is the difference between like, I guess, but we mentioned the Susquehanna and the Potomac mm-hmm. river. Like what is the main cover? Is, is it just rocks and boulders? Is there yeah, a lot of vegetation rocks, or grass? Uh, rocks, mainly um, gravel to larger rocks, to boulders, to, to trees. Okay. And then you have your areas where you have those taller grasses that stick up out of the water. And then uh, the aquatic grasses that grow up. Um, yeah. from is, the bottom. Has that been pretty good in the last couple of years? Like, how important has that grass been? Or in the it... Potomac, we haven't had any. Okay. And I think that's because in 2018, we had that high water mm. that lasted an entire year. I remember looking back re- um, recently at the historical uh, data for the mm. river. We never got below five feet in 2018 on wow. the river. Hmm. And then, you know, obviously those those grasses need light. Mm-hmm. And because the water was always so high and so uh, swift, so. Yeah. Um, uh, Brown, brown in color the mm. clarity wasn't any good yeah uh for the most part it would be from time to time but it wasn't enough to grow them mm-hmm. um but we lost that grass but the grass is starting to grow back i can see it up in the mm. last summer i saw a lot of it in um near point of rocks okay good so i suppose that grass eventually spreads mm-hmm. itself all over mm-hmm. i've seen areas way bigger than my boat that are growing that's good because that's really going to help mm. with the bait and, the and, and, and those grasses it. are um they're great. They're also terrible for jet boats. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some of the spots I just have to go through with the trolling motor because mm-hmm. I can't run the uh, jet motor through them. Mm-hmm. Fall is a tough time, too, because the leaves on the Oh, my gosh. Stuff, the leaves just cripple your up, boat. You know, so that's. I don't motor. know about some of these boats, but these out, these jet outboards, I don't know mm-hmm. about those inboards, but the jet outboards, it just cripples mm-hmm. them. And you just have to. Uh, you have to be able to clean that out. Yeah. And, How do you yeah. clean them off? Do you have to I get out of the boat? Back. No, okay. I just reach back and do it. And then some of those guys with those inboards have something they can stomp on. Okay. And then some of them have rakes. Mm-hmm. They can reach down and, and hmm. um, grab the stuff out of there. Wow, I didn't know that. So this, let's say going into the time this drops, going into like probably a spawn May, June, spawn into summertime, what, what should people be thinking about throwing uh, to catch fish and have success on the water? Plastics, no matter what. Okay. Always plastics. Tubes. Always tubes. Um, Ned rigs. Mm-hmm. Any kind of Ned rig. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now I've been using... Um, uh, swim baits, mm-hmm. about three inch swim baits, and uh, on it on just a, like an eighth ounce jig head. Show it to that camera there, right here, three nice. inch. Uh, and I do use Kitech uh, mm-hmm. swim baits. Um, and then um, when the water starts warming up, I feel like anything over once it gets to about fifty five degrees, because you have to remember I fish mainly on the Potomac, mm-hmm. and those fish are a little bit different than the ones on the Susquehanna. Those fish on the Susquehanna seem to be very cold water oriented. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They'll Base chase baits mm-hmm. in colder water mm-hmm. versus the Potomac. But once you get up above 55 degrees and it's no longer going down, you know, it, mm-hmm. it gets at 55 and it holds. And it, from mm-hmm. there on, it's going to go up because it's, summer's coming. Gotcha. Um, spinner baits, whenever on the, on the Potomac, whenever the water is high. Okay. I have more success mm-hmm. in high water with spinner baits and chatter baits. Um, any of those moving baits. Mm-hmm. So anytime you have a high water event, it pushes them to the shoreline and just start hitting mm-hmm. structure. Yeah. And then there's areas that I like that, that I know about that probably are going to be holding fish. Mm-hmm. And I'll use uh, spinner baits. You put a trailer on any of those? Not the spinner baits. I, you know, I don't, I put a trailer hook though, but okay. I only put a trailer hook if uh, I see track. people fishing mm-hmm. 
and they short strike them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they do, smallmouth do that a lot, man. Hmm. I've seen smallmouth grab the um, willow leaf blade and yeah. hold on to it, hmm. reeling them in, and then they get close to the boat and they let go of it. Interesting. And they grab the they They're grab aggressive. the spoon. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but any type of um, spinner bait such as this, I like a three six three sixteenth ounce mm-hmm. or a half ounce, okay. depending on how. Um, how fast the water's moving. Mm -hmm. And then um, if the water's dirty, I like using um, Colorado blades. Okay. And if the water's pretty clear, but it's still high, you can get away with willow leaf. Mm -hmm. And the willow leaf also help you get through uh, swifter water. Mm -hmm. If you're using a Colorado blade, it's just thumping real hard. You're going to be pulling that. Yeah, it it just doesn't um, (laughs) seem to work out. But if if you don't have one of those, a chatterbait works real good in... um, Mm-hmm. and swifter water that's interesting too thing you know, chatterbait and smallmouth i don't know why but y- mm-hmm. if you didn't know any better you wouldn't think you that know the funny thing. thing is i put trailers on my chatterbaits i don't know why but i won't put them on the spinnerbaits but i, I put swim baits on the on the uh mm-hmm. chatterbaits Chatter mm-hmm. yeah what's that what colors do you like when your chatterbaits the same as your spinnerbaits or different yeah colors? i'll tell you the the colors i like on a uh, spinnerbait white white chartreuse mm-hmm. um this color right here if, if you if you get i sometimes use war eagle spinnerbaits uh, it's called a mouse color. Hmm. Uh, this Popular one isn't color. the this one isn't the um, exact size, but that's the exact color. And um, black. Okay. And then the that's really interesting. I, and I I really don't pay attention to the uh, color of the blades as much. Um, either silver or, or that uh, gold or a copper mm. color. Okay. And, and then but pre- they're they're usually double. You go with the double ones. Double ones. Usually I have um. Either double Colorado blade or a double willow leaf. That's the fourth person to tell me I should start throwing a spinner bait again. I feel like I'm gonna get my ass kicked this no, year. But you I know, you know, I believe um you know, this is just this is all my experience. Yeah. I don't know other people um think or believe, but uh, all these lures, except for these plastics, a lot of these bigger lures, uh, your crank baits, your spinner baits, your chatter baits, they're very situational. Mm-hmm. You have to have a situation to throw them. You just can't always throw them. You're not going to get bit. They're not going to chase these in real low water conditions. Maybe in low light conditions they will, early in the morning or late in the evening. Mm-hmm. But I find that they work better in um, higher water. On so river. in low water conditions, would you just throw plastics? Or is there any kind of like fast with people? Bait? If I had people out with me, yeah, sure, okay. But I go out sometimes, and I and I, uh, you know, if if I'm out by myself mm-hmm. fishing, just mm-hmm. checking things out. Um, I throw all kinds of crazy stuff just to see. Mm-hmm. See and what's you, you work. could come across to, for whatever a few days where they're hitting spinner baits for some reason in some location, mm-hmm. and I'll just take people there. Okay, and it's in a I found too a buzz bait early morning. Yeah, like, and, and then and, low low water buzz yeah, baits. Yeah, like buzz baits, and don't be afraid to throw big. I mean, I throw yes. one of those booyah, and it's got the clacker on it, and it's a big buzz bait. Mm-hmm. And like same thing with spinner baits, and I find a lot of times people and I, I you can go big and go small, but I think th- those smallmouth, like you say, because they're so aggressive. And thinking about a spinner bait, like a lot of people like the thin wire, um, like Dave's tournament tackle, and th- I guess the thin wire kind of gives a little more vibration too. But but also th- those smallmouth, I mean, they'll they'll annihilate those spinner baits. I mean, they'll just tear them yeah, up. Yeah, they, they they hit them. Um, they hit them I, so I like hard. The, um, I use the the word. They hit them violently. Yes. Mm-hmm. They just absolutely yep. just smash them. Yep. So don't rule out. I, I've always, I've been a firm believer, like to your point, experiment. Even the whopper ploppers, like they came out with all these sizes. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, you can throw the big plopper and catch big smallmouth on the yeah. river. Don't let the size, because I, I have a picture over there of a, of a you know, four, 12 to 14 inch smallmouth, not a big one, mm-hmm. but it was caught on a big whopper plopper. And I only, you know, took the picture because I'm thinking, you know they'll they'll eat it. Don't mm-hmm. don't you? Oh, that's too big. They're not going to eat it. They'll eat it. Yeah, my know? my favorite three top water baits because I was talking about hard baits. Mm-hmm. Um, is a popper, mm-hmm. a pop R, pop R, yeah. popper, a um, um, whopper plopper, and a uh, buzz bait. Mm-hmm. Last year I started throwing those buzz baits again, mm-hmm. and it's easier to throw the whopper plopper with people. Because it floats, so mm. it's not going to sink and right. get snagged. You don't have to get but it if, going. But if yeah. you could throw a um, a buzz bait, and I like using um, black colored top I'm water. Same way. Yeah. Um, if you could throw those uh, buzz baits, man, they catch big fish. Mm. It's that's. A I fun mean, bite it's it's too. a whole other it's a whole other class of fish mm-hmm. yes. that you're targeting yes. early in the morning, and sometimes that top water bite 
at least on the Potomac, Upper Potomac, the window's real small, and they literally shut off. Why do you think that is? I I, I think they're um, uh, there's a small window where that where they hit early in the morning, and then they choose to um stay. They, they, they go yeah. for other forage. They uh, could be coming deeper. off of the night bite, too, depending yeah. on, like, mm. they could have been feeding through the night, so they're still up shallow. And you, if you catch them, and I say it, too, I'm talking early morning. There's times we put on the river, and it's not dark, but it's it's early morning. So yes. you're catching them still coming off of an a evening, you know, nighttime type of mm. shallow water bite. If you, can, if you can hit the river when it's foggy early in the morning mm. oh, in the middle my. of the summer, Mm. And the water water's low, and I find that water has to be low, usually, because mm-hmm. uh, then it's exposing the rocks, and then mm-hmm. and it's it's giving them a lot more um, shallower areas to uh, feed in. Yes, yeah. you've talked about that in your videos over mm. the park and how that wall. He talks a lot about how the wall, and he showed had a video that was pretty cool where they saw the wake up. Oh, Jim Brennan Park, that yeah. Wall they use it as an ambush because they can't yeah. go. And they'll like, use so the shore as an ambush point, yeah. Interesting and, and, and it's amazing, too, um, in my experience, because I have people from all walks of life and, and skill level fishing with the topwater. Mm-hmm. And being able to land the fish on a topwater, I think is a lot dependent on the fish. It has nothing to do with the person. Mm-hmm. Because uh, a whopper plopper is you just throw it out and reel it back in, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's usually what I'm telling the people to do. And it depends on how, my, how bad they want that bait, mm-hmm. on how how well they hook themselves mm-hmm. but i see a lot of fish come off too because mm-hmm. oh, yeah. they they hit it so they hit it mm-hmm. they hit it poorly mm-hmm. and i guess some fish see um see better than others mm-hmm. yeah water. and it's plus it's the weight of the bait if you're throwing like it's like a lipless bait like people say like that mm-hmm. like if you have this big ass weighted bait here mm-hmm. and they shake and they throw mm-hmm. they can get that hook wiggled out of their mouth compared to maybe like a small buzz bait like it doesn't have the same mass well, i'm telling you too though i've got in those live target mice the mouse uh-huh. and it's a soft plastic kind of like a yeah. frog bite huh. and it walks a dog <laughs> i've had those small mouth and i've had them like turn it inside out inhale it like swallow it but i've also had them they hit it and i've literally seen like the mouse will fly up in the air and the mm-hmm. mass is out of the water and it, i've never caught it this way but it's like the, it's still trying to get it you know, yeah get it and i've seen him hit so aggressive i've seen him go after the lure four or five times yes oh, yeah. yes i've seen him also in the susquehanna one time i saw one launch out of the water mm-hmm. come completely straight up out of the water and the bait went further higher in the air than the fish did but the fish came completely out of the water yes and they never hooked up with it obviously but it was just an an absolute monster of a smallmouth. i'm gonna share another tip i was on the susquehanna we we're doing a little tournament and uh the guys that won it Two brothers, older brothers, um, said they were catching him on a spinner bait. He had a four and a half pound smallmouth, and he was telling the story about how, to your point, he was bringing it back. He was bringing it in the, the bass. The smallmouth was trailing, trailing. He was getting close to the boat, and he didn't know what to do because he was about out of you know about ready to bring it up. So he didn't. Mm-hmm. He just killed it. Yeah. He stopped it. The spinner bait just fluttered down to the bottom and, and died on the bottom. The smallmouth swam up, looked at it. And he twitched. As soon as he started back twitching, it took it. So, now, like that, that story's always stuck with me too. Because to your point, they're gonna stay with it. You know, don't. Or how many times you get bit, mm-hmm. and you, or you miss it, and you're like, ah, and you no, no, just leave it out there. Leave I it out there. I told people that stay. before. I, they're like, oh man, we just missed it. Stay. Because I see, I, I see the explosion at the top mm-hmm. of the water. I'm like, it'll come back. Keep reeling. Yep. Keep reeling. Yep. And mm-hmm. I said, kill it real quick. Yep. Because sometimes I'm standing up a little bit higher in the boat than yep. they are, and I said, um. Pop it one time, yep. and it'll, it'll smash it. That, mm-hmm. That's the trigger. Because I can yeah. see yeah. it. And that's something else I want to try, because I, I watch a bunch, because I'm very much a, a, a fairy wand finesse guy, so I follow a bunch of Japanese anglers, and they're starting to figure eight bass like you would for muskie. Oh, Cause, really? Because they said when you see that they come in really hot, if you run out of line, just make that thing do a circle, and sometimes Fish you get to bust it on it. with a trout. I watched one of his videos. You, he did? Fish really? with a trout, and that's a wild concept, but yes, that's... But it's interesting. That's it, an aggressive fish. And yeah, I guess it would work on a smallmouth because they're they're it, very aggressive. Especially if there's like two of them that are that are shark and a bait. Like yeah, know, I mean, how many times yeah. have you hooked a smallmouth and there's another one, sometimes yeah. even yes. bigger than the one you yeah. have on there, yes. following it, yeah, trying yes. to get out of his mouth. It's or incredible. you see when you when that top water. This is fascinating because when you see a top water bite too mm-hmm. happening, when you're lucky enough to be on the water and you see it happening, mm-hmm. and how much. You know, they're they may not have eaten it on the first, but if they did, they're they're the bait fish are around there. They're coming up again. Like they yeah. may go ahead and you know eat three or four. You mm-hmm. know, I don't know. I had that, a, that's interesting. Yeah, I had a um last year. I had a trip where we went up. We were up around Dickerson Power Plant, and um we eventually caught a fish. But uh you know, 
you were talking about m- them missing topwater baits mm-hmm. or you're not catching them. Or, mm-hmm. Well, he threw out three times. He spent about $30, $30 in, to- in, in um, whopper ploppers before he caught this fish. <laughs> but he threw out three times in this one hole. He threw out very first time he threw out. It was a it was your it was your typical like uh, textbook eddy, right? Mm-hmm. Water was low. It was early in the morning. There was some steam on the water. Wham! One hits it. He's reeling it in. The line, the knot breaks or something. Something something <sighs> bad with the line. Ugh. The fish gets away with this with the decent sized whopper plopper. They're what twelve bucks? Oh uh, yeah, they're not. Depending cheap. on where you buy them, could even be fifteen. Mm-hmm. Loses that one. He throws a smaller one on. He ties it on, throws it out there. Wham! Second fish hits it. Loses it again. What line is he throwing with? The fish, co- the the bait comes off. So the third time, I give him one of my whopper ploppers, and um, I tie it on. He throws it out, and the fish is nineteen and a half inches long, and he catches it. Mm. Third time out, and mm. another fish hits. Mm. I mean, that's how aggressive they are. Yeah, yeah. they're they're. It's it's stupid how aggressive smallmouth they, are compared to largemouth. And they, you know, you talk about yeah, it is. And I I was waiting one time with the Ray was talking about the hula grub, mm-hmm. and I was and I broke off, and so retie. You can lose a lot of fish too on on your line. Uh, yeah, for whatever reason on top water, your lures will break sometimes. But I they'll, they'll, I end up catching that That's same weird, fish. I, I threw back in like not even two minutes later. Hook up, bring it in, unlip it, and there's my my hula grub down oh, wow. yeah i was like blown away i mean but they gorge they like, have they, to eat yeah they have to eat they I do mean, not it's... care at hey, all you were talking about two uh, you said for the summertime or in low mm-hmm. water conditions yep. mm-hmm. uh, my go-to bait is a three inch cinco mm-hmm. absolutely love three inch mm-hmm. cinco how are you rigging it yeah uh, on a uh, charlie brewer slider head you ever heard of that i like it yep um it's kind 16th of a... ounce or an eighth ounce is it like uh well i'm thinking the dragon head but no, no, it's a, um, but it's got. I a, wish I had the hook. It's got it's the weights on a, top, and then the um the hooks a little offset. Bend, offset, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's a very, very finesse mm-hmm. way. Yep. Like that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just like that. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like no, that, that's good. That's the thing about the Ned rig that pisses me off is like when you use like again. I, I love their products and everything, but that Ned rig head, it's so easy to lose a thousand of them if you don't cast the right angle. Mm-hmm. And I feel like my quest in life is to find the perfect jig head that goes through everything without mm-hmm. a problem. They make, if you're talking, if, if you if you use a Z-Man product, mm-hmm. I like using their hooks for their product. And uh, they make mm-hmm. that bullet hook. Mm-hmm. You've seen that one? And um, that's a great hook. It's got the it, weight on the belly, and it's also got yeah. the weight on the front. And, and you're got, shoving okay. that hook okay. into yeah. the meat of the um, the bait. Yeah, it's not. Let me try and, that. and the hook's no longer exposed. Okay, let me try that. Then. And um, I've had people have had a lot of su- success using those. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That, and that and that's a good point too. Where I mean, for people that have never fished a river, you've talked before about the rocks and boulders. It can be frustrating. And river mm-hmm. is. River is difficult. I mean, it's because of the current, mm-hmm. because of the rocks, because of the like. Yeah. It's not you're gonna. It it's a challenge sometimes, but those little t- tips and techniques um, yeah. can go a long way, so it's not so frustrating. And I don't find the hooks um, when you um set the hook uh, on that type of hook that I just mm-hmm. spoke about, or that bullet hook. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you have pretty good success. With I think the hook you do up. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, it's just it's so it's so interesting to me like th- how important the angle is like and that's something again where if you grow up fishing a lake it is probably the easier thing to kind of learn and deal with because there's so much to it like you don't want to just depending on what you want you don't want to bomb mm-hmm. cast up river you don't want to mm-hmm. fish down pull up you have to have that angle mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. there's Travis said like almost like you're fly fishing you have to mm-hmm. anticipate that you're casting and you want that thing to maximize in the kill zone mm-hmm. as long as possible mm-hmm. and that is so hard for a newbie that doesn't understand you don't just if you bomb a tube up. Like, mm-hmm. guess what? You're probably just going to have to retie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just lost a tube. Like, there's so much more extra effort you got to think into every single cast of mm-hmm. what you're trying to do there. You know, you can use the current a lot of the times to do all your work for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. Because it's going to give it enough um, enough action mm-hmm. that you don't have to do anything right. other than um, trying to keep your line as tight as you can mm-hmm. without moving that bait. Mm-hmm. You keep bringing in the slack every so often as it moves down the river, and eventually you'll feel, a, um, you, you'll feel weight at the end of the line. They'll nope. tap it. They'll hit it. They'll they'll take off with it. And go up river. How much do you use a tube? Like, cause I know like I we, use a tube a lot. Cause we have this fun little thing. I like 
like you never see the elites and the big pros use tubes ever. They always mm -hmm. use a Ned rig when they go to St. Lawrence or whatever. And I'm mm -hmm. always curious, like, okay, clearly it works. I talk, we talk to people all the time. The tube works. Is it just kind of like what your confidence in, or is there a time that a Ned rig outshines a tube and vice versa? I don't know. I, I think, um, first of all, if the fish are there, uh, I'm a firm believer. If, if they're, if they're there where you are, mm -hmm. small mouth, they're so aggressive. If you have the right profile, mm -hmm. which could be a tube or the, Two and three quarter, a two and three quarter inch tube, mm -hmm. we're talking about for smallmouth, or a two and three quarter inch Ned rig. Mm -hmm. That's what those, uh, like the Z Man bait yeah. mm -hmm. is. Anything under three inches, they're going to hit it. I agree with you. And um, a tube, the problem with the tube is it's an exposed hook for the most part. But uh, tubes are killer. They're just absolute killers on the river. Mm -hmm. they, they, um, they fool the smallmouth constantly. And yes, there's you have to learn how to um, you learn how to use them. But uh, I don't know a guide on the Susquehanna or the Upper Potomac that doesn't use a tube. And I think it's I think it's a river mm. thing. Yeah. I think the river the river rats tube. And I think the lakes or anybody that you now to your point, you can be fishing the lakes, but then you can go on a river a big river. But I think it is something. It could possibly be something about. A culture thing almost or, yeah, or I, I wonder how much of it is a culture yeah. thing too because i guess you're right if you're a pro and you have to go from the mm -hmm. st lawrence to texas like mm -hmm. yeah you're probably not gonna to get his so point it'll work both yeah so and it, it goes back to that confidence thing too do you throw a lot of jigs or do you have clients that throw you mean a lot like of jigs? um rubber skirted jigs yeah like a no. jig and pig type of thing oh no. interesting uh, i i can but mm -hmm. I, I just don't mm -hmm. okay um they'd be hard for a lot of uh customers to use because a lot of people don't use them Mm -hmm. okay. or, or have never experienced um uh or don't have any experience using them mm -hmm. and, and then one thing um i guess we're on really flip topic series uh, you mentioned crappie fishing uh -huh. on the potomac river i blew my i didn't know there was crappie there I oh man there's away. um there's black crappie there mm -hmm. okay and um all over the potomac even down in the tidal potomac there's there's a lot of crappie tidal potomac has huge ones mm -hmm. um i find them anywhere from uh, real small to upwards of a little over a foot long on the oh, wow. uh, upper Potomac. And um, I fish for them. I take people fish, fishing for them, but you have to find the schools. Mm -hmm. And um, they can be hard to find. Mm -hmm. But in the springtime, they, they go, like any other fish, they go, when it's time for them to spawn, mm -hmm. they go to the shorelines. So you just start going to these little tributaries mm -hmm. and start looking to see where they're heavy that year, mm -hmm. where, where, they, where they're uh, located. And um, uh, you can hammer them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like they just reload. I've had I've had trips where we've caught over sixty crappie. Holy moly! Before uh, before we even tried bass fishing. Hmm. That's yeah. freaking awesome. Yeah, and you can keep in Maryland. You can keep uh, fifteen per person if you want to. I've never had anyone keep that many. They usually keep a half dozen mm -hmm. or so. Do they do they hold a rock like smallmouth, or are they are they on different like are they on like a wood no, they, and stuff um, or? Um, usually more brush. More yeah, wood. the brush. So most of the time when I catch them, they're on trees. Okay, but uh, they'll be at the mouth of a creek as well mm -hmm. there's one there's one creek that has a real deep like hole in front of it mm -hmm. uh, on the upper potomac and uh they'll sit right there but yet there's a tree right there too and the roots are going down into the water so yeah and then there's a rock a big rock that they're probably um hanging out underneath the uh the current going over top of them I, for some reason, I never thought crappie on the upper potomac i don't know why you always think mm -hmm. like lakes and stuff and i know the title sometimes have not the upper like that's and crazy to me there's a lot of similarities between a crappie and a smallmouth, I feel like. Because I grew up catching crappie. And um, one of the similarities is um, uh, finesse. You have to be finesse with them. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, use small baits. And, um, you know, uh, there's really not a hook set on them. It's more of a just pulling up. And, uh, you know, as, you're, um, as you feel the bite, you just pull up on it and keep reeling. So guys at home, that'd be kind of like when you fish a crankbait. Um, if you guys have watched my videos on that, you're, it's not, the you're, not, of... you're not you're not whacking them. You just pull into the pressure and the treble yeah. hook kind of buries in there because you try to like slack line a mm -hmm. crappie. Like a, um, <laughs> like a I, I usually, yeah, I usually drop, find the schools shot, yeah. of crappie in the summertime fishing um, small swim baits for, for smallies. Hmm. And okay. uh, we'll get around a tree or something mm -hmm. like that. And they'll hit the same, like mm -hmm. a small. Yeah, they'll, they'll hit, the hit a three size. inch one. But wow. then what you want to do it's almost like using a bait to locate fish. Okay. So if I, if I come across a school and they're aggressive enough that they've hit a three inch uh, swim bait, and let's say the crappie's 
eight, nine inches long. Mm -hmm. and he just inhaled one of these. <laughs> we can cut this down, but I have other baits on the boat that okay. are usually about two inches, but we'll cut this down to two and a half inches or something like that. Now, now and then you... put it back on a jig head, Okay. throw it out again, and reel it in real slow, and they nail them. So pretty much when you're looking for crappie, I mean, is I guess, is it hard to locate them in the sense that you do you use your electronics to find them or is it more like you're using search baits and then you'll come across them yeah that's that's then... how i'm finding them okay. search baits and uh i mean they could be anywhere on the river i found them on the main stem of the river just on the shoreline behind um deadfalls okay and i find them in the creeks too okay and um i found that the schools they stay as long as nothing drastically changes um they're there around that tree or whatever it is all the time until the water rises too far mm -hmm. up or goes too far down. What's the biggest crappie you've ever caught in the Potomac? Probably um, around around 14 inches. Wow. That's big pretty enough. damn yeah. healthy. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a frying pan. Yeah. Um, uh, the uh, customers I have have caught them around a foot, 13 <sighs> inches long. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. Yeah. That's really cool. They're I, a blast, though. They're, um, yeah. they're a lot of fun, especially if you have kids on the boat. Yeah. Uh, they're us usually pretty pretty um, kid friendly. I mean, mm -hmm. they're pretty easy to catch when you find a school. Mm -hmm. There's a couple spots on the river that uh, they tend to be in every year at some point in time. Hmm. And um, I usually spot them because someone's fishing, and uh, I can tell that it was a crappie. That they have a, a way that they sh strike mm -hmm. a bait that's different mm -hmm. from a bass, mm -hmm. even a bluegill. It's just like I can tell that mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, well, we're gonna stop. There's there's crappie here. And then we'll throw in and we'll start catching them. How many are usually in a school? Just a random spitball? Is oh, it like man. two or three or is it more no, than that? No, 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 no. There's, uh, there could be well over a hundred of them. Holy moly. They're Good just Lord. stacked in there. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Yeah. I don't know how they um, uh, get from point A to point B when they have to move because mm -hmm. the whole school's moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, I've been in uh, last year, no, two years ago, there was a stretch of river where there was two large schools and they were less than... 500 yards apart hmm. and they were on these deadfalls that's great yeah. yeah do you know of any crappie on the shenandoah like yeah that? Like oh really? yeah north fork uh huh. they're catching them the main branch they're catching them yeah. the basil goes i know some Randall. older guys that i see out there uh that's all they do is they fish yeah, for them. a lot of guys and, uh, big crappy fishermen yeah and they they've been fishing for them for years on the potomac mm -hmm. i want any smallmouth actually would hit one of those because we we talked about how the yeah. flathead will eat all the bluegill and stuff like well, oh i'm sure they, they will and that's where like that fry same thing it's a dog eat dog world yeah. so that crappy and you see a lot of these bait manufacturers i mean bluegills are common but you see mm -hmm. a lot of that crappy uh colored you know lures and stuff mm -hmm. because i think that is also you know they're gonna you're gonna eat same thing we said before whatever we, they can eat so. we catch real big bluegill when we get into these uh crappie schools and um I call them the piranhas of the Potomac because they destroy your plastic baits oh and rip goodness. the tails of them mm -hmm. off. But I mean, they're big. Hmm. They're bigger than your hand sometimes. Well, that's good though. That's probably a good, I mean, it sounds it's like healthy. there's a good healthy balance in that mm -hmm. that river uh, from what I'm hearing. Well, it sounds cause... like the flatheads or the, or like, again, like I'm neutral on this, everyone. I don't care either way, but like the flathead and the musky and stuff, it hasn't attacked that portion mm. of the river. Like right. uh, apparently like the Susquehanna. Right. And I know, I think it's with dam five where they mm. actually illegally put flathead catfish right. up there. It sounds like I haven't gotten down there. Like, do you see like a lot of catfish down that way or channel or cats? I do. Um, we don't catch very many flathead in this section of the river that I fish. That's, that's good. We've though. caught them though before on tubes. Mm hmm and um on uh, moving baits flatheads in particular yeah. okay. i've caught them on um or i've had people catch them on a crankbait i can remember one time on a crankbait and then um someone caught one on a tube one time but they weren't big they were smaller smaller so uh, they are making their way down then so that's mm -hmm. interesting okay yeah Whew. you just think about like it just took like two or three people like it's so crazy thing. like it doesn't take much to mm -hmm. change the ecosystem when they were mm -hmm. when they were dumped in dan five and then mm -hmm. think all the way down where, where you're guiding and the fact that they are, they're just slowly making their way down mm -hmm. through the system mm -hmm. to see what that'll be like in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I mean, for better or worse, I mean, they're here to stay and we got to mm -hmm. just do, you know, deal with it, I guess, mm -hmm. you know? How is the health of the fishery where you're at? I think it's good. Again, mm -hmm. I'm not a biologist, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, well, I think I said that before yeah. the last time I was on, but um, I think it's really good. I mean, I see a lot of turtles. I see a lot of snapping turtles. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, birds, different several different species of bird or duck mm -hmm. um you've got eagles 
Uh, the cormorants have come back now. Oh, awesome. They're back out on the river. Mm. Um, there's a lot of uh, cranes, you know, or, mm. or blue herrings. Blue herrings, yeah. Um, and the good. fish look really good. That's good. You know, um, obviously the population could be better. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that just comes with time. Mm -hmm. It's keeping you out there. I mean, you're no, able yeah, to go it, out, it, it comes it, and sustaining. goes. It comes in um, cycles. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, as long as it, Hopefully the spring goes well with with water mm -hmm. levels, and uh, they have a successful spawn. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think in the next couple of years we'll we'll see a, a huge difference in this in the population. How does Mar but we still catch? I mean, I could still take a trip out and we'll catch 40, 50 fish in mm -hmm. the summertime on a trip. Is that Maryland regulated or I know because like where you're Maryland and West Virginia, how much are they working together yeah, I mean, on Maryland. that? I, I don't know about the other Maryland's... states, but I mean, Maryland owns the entire Potomac. Okay, yeah. Yeah. gotcha. Except for that portion that goes through D.C. and then they have something, the, the district takes care of that. Gotcha. Okay. And then Dickerson, like you said, the, the warm water discharge there, have you had the opportunity to fish that in the wintertime at all? Like it doesn't area? exist anymore. Oh, it doesn't? The discharge is there, but there's no warm water. Oh, out dang it. Anymore. Okay. Yeah, it's been quite a few years. Uh, they're not even running water through that power plant anymore. Really? Yeah, there's, there's the pumps aren't even working anymore. Hmm, that's depressing. Okay. Yeah. I heard stories about that growing up from old river rats when mm -hmm. I had my little kayak. Like, I never got up there, but, like, when that thing was operating, mm -hmm. where it was just absolutely just gangbusters. Mm -hmm. But, oh yeah, yeah. That's that. That okay. Well, that's what surprising. is your favorite uh, <laughs> season or time of year to be on the water catching fish? Um, uh, probably uh, when the water's cold. Probably right mm -hmm. about now. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the problem with that, I, I there's 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 another time too. But the problem with this is the weather's so unpredictable. Like right now, it's mm -hmm. tonight. It's supposed to get down to what nineteen degrees or right. something. Yeah. Right. I mean, and it was staying in the forties for mm -hmm. well over a week at night. Mm -hmm. Um. So this time of year before uh, early spring and then uh, late fall, mm -hmm. I like uh, the end of October and then mm -hmm. going into November. Right. Yeah. I love like, it's so funny. Like I always heard it once. It's like in the fall, it's a consistent cool down and in the spring it's a it's a sporadic warm-up mm -hmm. because yeah everything is slowly goes down in the fall, but now it's just, you don't know. I feel that the fish on the Potomac, I can speak about the Potomac mm -hmm. a lot more than the Susquehanna. Um, the fish on the upper Potomac river, they do a lot better going into winter than they do coming out of winter. Mm -hmm. they, they don't like, mm -hmm. they don't like the, um, uh, mm. as, as we look out, very it's snowing inconsistent and... weather, <laughs> right but in the fall, there's always a window. There's always a window now, That's like, right. we're, yeah. like we're fishing right now where the fishing's excellent mm -hmm. and there'll, there'll be a window in summertime where the fishing's excellent, mm -hmm. but that could be, a, that could be for an entire month mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, in the summertime. I mean, and then in the winter time. Uh, there's going to be a window sometime in late November into December mm -hmm. where the fishing, it becomes winter fishing mm -hmm. and it's, it's excellent. And I have found, we were talking earlier too about, you know, kind of a fishing hunting type of combo. Yeah. I've done that before in November and, uh, fished down to a national forest land and hunted. And, but that, that bite in November was as aggressive as pretty much all season. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. so probably i say this time of year this time of year is my favorite and the fall is my favorite mm -hmm. i mean i love to hunt deer hunt and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. and um the smallmouth keep me on the river yeah because yeah. Uh, uh that's how that's how good it is well and that's the thing too and i write you know when i write in woods waters talking about that too and certain guys are and i used to be this way i was seasonal based on the season so you know muzzle bow season muzzle loader rifle you know trout fish after that only smallmouth fish in this in the uh in the summertime but yes you're you're so right like see the fishing is a year-round mm -hmm. seasonal yeah. well thing. and, and like, that's it's, it's it's hard to um around here for some reason it's really hard for people to um grasp that accept or comprehend that. that yes uh they think fish... they just shut or they hibernate like a bear like a black no, bear I mean, hibernate it, or something 365 day year a thing here i yeah. mean uh we we can fish you know as long as the river doesn't freeze correct we can fish it now, sometimes the water might be too cold. I mean, when it's in the real low 30s. Um, but, I mean, it's you can fish it. But and that November day, too, you don't have the pressure because yeah. you know, no, after September, leaves. kids are going back to school, people yeah. are at work, you know, people are in the woods, they're in the tree stand. Mm -hmm. So you pretty much, there's times you kind of have that river system oh, to, to oh, yeah. yourself. The biggest fish I see consistently when I'm on the river is now mm -hmm. and in late fall, like mm -hmm. I said. Correct. 
uh, right around Halloween's some mm-hmm. of my uh, that's my usually my favorite time of year anyways mm-hmm. to be outside. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> late October into into November, mm-hmm. and these fish are like, where in the world did these these mm-hmm. big smallmouth come from? Mm-hmm. You haven't seen them all summer, and all mm-hmm. of a sudden here they are. Or you do, you'll tangle with one or two in the summertime. Mm-hmm. That's 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 real big, mm-hmm. early in the morning or late in the evening, and the only way to the only way I've really seen um, to in the summertime to catch those is early or late in the mm-hmm. early in the day, late in the day. Mm-hmm. And it's usually with top water, but those uh, but these plastics like swim baits and sinkos and tubes, you can you can uh, hook into a few big mm-hmm. ones um, in the middle of the day. That's cool on the river. I'm just thinking too. Before I forget, I would encourage people to reach out to Jeff Green, Shallow Water Fishing Adventures, because he does a pretty cool newsletter too that you get. He'll send you yeah, an email, email, and you I'm can getting ready to do a new it. one here. So you know, if uh, you're listening, and in what better way to get information from somebody that's on the river mm-hmm. a lot, a lot more than we are? So um, it's a real quick read. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, write a bunch in it. Mm-hmm. You've read them, mm-hmm. yeah, Jared, and they're they're, uh, they're short mm-hmm. to the point. And uh, if you had any other questions, I mean, mm-hmm. after you've read them, you can email yeah. me. Mm-hmm. And then all of his information, guys, will be linked in the episode description uh, on our YouTube channel, Apple, Spotify, wherever you digest podcasts. Please also leave a like for this man for coming in today. And also, please subscribe to the channel. The more this grows, the bigger we can actually get this, the more guests, the more shows that we can do. Uh, one question that we ask everybody are, what are some like fishing goals that you have for this year? And then the more of like the hot topic side, if you could, what's one thing you'd change about the Potomac or have done, whether it's from fishing game or anything else, what would be one thing you'd have done? Oh, probably oh, the the second one is uh, probably more um, attention to the crappie. Hmm. Hmm. That's a big sport fish throughout the entire country. In the mm-hmm. Midwest, it's huge. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, people make a living doing it. Yeah, they're like crappie. Yeah, there's circuits, professional right? um, tournaments. Yeah, but uh, I I can't believe that Maryland doesn't spend more time on the crappie. Hmm. But hopefully they can or they will. Um, Maryland is finicky with their like, cause like we talked about like the Potomac, tidal Potomac, and like how big like the Bassmasters always go there and stuff, but they don't stock. And then there's the gill netting that's been an issue that we've talked about. And mm-hmm. hopefully I'm not, we get somebody on the show. And about I'm not that. sure if they even track the crappie in the state of Maryland. Hmm. I don't know if you've You're asked. Right. It's almost a forgotten. Uh, as I think about it, even Virginia, like it's. I mean, there's those guys that are crappy fishermen, like you say, mm-hmm. crappy or crappie. But I mean, but... yeah, I mean, it's a type of fish where you shouldn't even feel bad keeping them. You right, know? Yeah. where they're I mean, good that's table what fare. Oh, yeah. that's, that's what they're. Mm-hmm. That's what they're meant for. Yeah, they're really right. good. Uh, like a walleye. I mean, that's what mm-hmm. they're meant for. They're probably one of the best tasting fish in the country, mm-hmm. in the United States. It, if, well, Sleater had a good population of them. So yeah, Sleater's where I grew up. Mm-hmm. It still has a fantastic mm-hmm. population, and now they have a kayak boat ramp that is open to the public, and you can still get on there. But yeah, I mean, my brother and I would catch a hundred a day. Mm-hmm. It's insane. Yeah. Like largemouth, like our swim baits, they were black and white. It's mm-hmm. not because of a shad pattern. It's because of the crappie. They were swallowing crappie. Yeah, I'm trying to think like Bugs Island or, or Gaston, they have the, they have their crappy tournaments down there too. Mm-hmm. You see them post but, on Bobcats and stuff. They'll post. And it's know, so, big it's so crappy. weird though. Cause when you look at Virginia, how mm-hmm. wide it is, it's mm-hmm. like Kerr is almost a Southern. Right. Is it even for, I mean like culturally that's Southern and down there they love their crappie. But when you get up to like Lake Anna and up near us, you're right. Like we're just not, mm-hmm. we're not that big in crappie fishing yeah. up at this part of Virginia. And, and, then, and then you have people, they have people that pronounce it crappie and crappie. Yeah. yeah it crappie, depends on what part of, co- mm-hmm. co- part of the country, country you're from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in the South too, they're huge. Oh, it's, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, I, I don't, I, I think, um, I, I wish they would uh, put more time yeah. into maybe um, uh, tracking them and, uh, you know, uh, letting the public know that we have them. Yeah. And there are some, um, now I think about it too, there's a lot of pond fishermen. We got we to love Jim Clay because Jim, he goes out to these ponds and he'll bring them in. He'll go out and catch a mess. And he'll come in the door here. When he comes in with his plate of crappy, like he's already, you know, flayed them and uh-huh. cooked them. I mean, it's still warm. It's hot. It's warm. Like it's delicious. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. uh, so they're, they're still out there. Yeah. We just, they're not, it's not something to maybe focused on, like you say. Um, and what was your first question? Oh, uh, the and fr- I hopped on the uh, I hopped on the crop. No, no, you're part. fine. It's like, like, what are some like goals, and not just business wise, but you have like any PRs you want to hit this year with with, with a crappie or a smallmouth, or is it like what was a fishing goal that you have or dream this year that you'd like to have done? Well, the um, probably uh, I'll spend more time looking for the crappie. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to do. Uh, yeah. I, I'd like to do um, uh, trips. Just strictly for crappie. 
Cool. I want to I want to figure them out. It's a good get, idea. And get better at them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I find them when I find them. Yeah. We can hammer them, but um, huh. uh, they're uh, they're pretty hard to uh, uh, find mm-hmm. on the river. You just have to keep finding you know the spots because I, like I said, the schools move. Mm-hmm. Right. When the water when the water level changes, they move. Mm-hmm. So it's probably probably that. Okay. Yeah, because like this again, it's just so. It's, weird. A, it's 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 not like a fantastic goal or anything, but <laughs> the, the the crappie, I, I they're they're um something that I did as a kid and I've done my entire mm-hmm. life, but uh, they're uh they're just a fun fish, man. But is is crappie fishing like when you grew up and you fished the 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 lakes out over in, in Arkansas and stuff? It, is it, it's gotta be different. Cause we're like, you're going in 30 feet of water, maybe with electronics like that's such a, but you're still using basically the same techniques. Yeah. It's you're all using the same techniques. And I'll tell you it. what, like out in Oklahoma on, on grand Lake, you can buy these small crappie jigs. Mm-hmm. You can't find them here mm-hmm. anywhere really? on the East coast. Huh? So, I mean, they, they have jigs and people, um, people make them like there's, there's, uh, uh, just, small businesses out there that make mm. crappie jigs mm. and stuff that we wouldn't even hear about out here yeah we sell them we even sell like and little flies and little fly patterns um which is just chenille and a little bead uh-huh. you know a little tail and so we and we've got a selection because it's it is more common not more i think about it, it's more common right here than mm. than i realize and and, mm. I'll, and i'll probably also to answer that first question that you asked too about goals is focus a lot on uh, channel catfish too. Okay. On the river, because mm-hmm. uh, there's tons of them out there. It's insane, and, and they're a blast. Yeah. Because I, I do trips for them, and um, they're uh, they're just a lot of fun, especially if you have kids mm-hmm. that go out and want to catch mm-hmm. some fish. That's right. And they you know they they fight real well. Mm-hmm. That's the nice thing about crappie and catfish, things like that, or even blue. If you guys, if you're gonna take your your kids to a pond yeah. and fish for bluegill, like you yeah. can have consistent like. Them standing on the front of a, yeah, yeah, them standing on the front of a boat and catching one fish in eight mm. hours is not going to get them hooked no. on the sport. But when you can just have them always like like we had what, what they said today, the tug is the drug. Like yeah. get them. Yeah, I've heard that yeah. before. Yeah, that's what yeah. it is. If you get your little kid to like catch like six or seven, even if they're mm. dinks, they're going to be hooked on it for life. People right. get a kick out of going out and catching multiple species too. Yeah, right. So like when we go out and then um, we're it's usually in the uh, cooler months, spring, fall, and winter. Uh, we'll catch walleye too. Sometimes people get a kick out of it. They love it. Mm-hmm. They love catching mm-hmm. bass. They love catching smallmouth, largemouth. And if you can catch, I've had it where we've caught smallmouth, largemouth, some walleye, and we've caught crappie. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, it, and that's fun. Mm-hmm. That's a walleye. I mean, we'll, we have to do yeah, a whole episode on that. You know? Yeah. So real quick to um, the and I'm just thinking we can keep talking, but don't want to forget uh, people that want to go out on one of these fishing adventures, yeah. guided trips. Where do they find you? At shallowwaterfishingadventures.net. dot net. Okay. Um, you can also just type in Jeff Green Fishing. Okay. In the search engine, and I'll pop up. Mm-hmm. You got a nice website. Yeah. Um, now you're also talking one of uh, coming soon, possibly another thing you're looking at doing. Uh, we talked off camera before. Uh, talk a little bit about like an online store you're looking. Yeah, at, I'm gonna have a, um, starting. I'm gonna attach it to my website. It's gonna be a SWFA Baits for Shallow Water Fishing Adventures mm-hmm. Baits. And um, I'll have them available for people to mm-hmm. purchase. And they're the baits I make. They're the jig heads I make. And I have also hard baits that I um, I buy the blanks for and mm-hmm. I paint them. That's cool. And those are what I use. Um, and I'll have those for sale online. I think that's great because, you know, and I just, you know, we we're talking about Fish Hawk before. We're going to order some of the stuff that he's using mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. his YouTube and some of the stuff that he's kind of helped make. And he's got some inline spinners um and different like this this fishing industry i mean folks out there like um and i know one of the guests you had on before um at the berkeley spring show you mm-hmm. were talking about the small mom and pop um not just the the bait shops but also the bait manufacturers so you know if you have an opportunity go on and support you know these oh, yeah. groups local people because, yeah you know and i not, mean what, what what i'm what i'm making is what catches fish is, on the upper Potomac river in the, the yep. susquehanna river Correct. i mean um the three colors I use, uh, I, I don't really make anything that's crazy. I like black, mm-hmm. um, some type of brown, which is usually like a pumpkin color, mm-hmm. and green pumpkin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, you're going to catch fish on those three colors. Mm-hmm. I sell three-inch uh, Cinco's, two mm-hmm. and three-quarter inch um, Ned Rigs, two and three-quarter mm-hmm. inch tubes. Um, the uh, the baits that the blanks that I get 
I like painting them black, black and gold, black and silver. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they just flat out catch fish. Uh, it, it's nothing, nothing fantastic. This is guide quality stuff, meaning it's mm -hmm. it's done, um, it's done well, but it's you know it's not done. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to mass produce or yeah, yeah. it's yeah, and it's um, it's it, it, I'm not doing it for like a hobby. I'm doing it to right to make baits to catch fish. Right, mm -hmm. that's right, and that's good. And I want to say too, like you know, you talked about Kitek, War Eagle, you talked about Z Man, like those one, are great companies. And though, one and I thing use about them. us, and that's what I was gonna say, is we're not exclusive. Mm -hmm. Like that's what one thing everybody needs to understand. We're yeah. not. We're we're here. We're gonna sell it all because everybody likes something different. Mm -hmm. And but it doesn't mean too. I think about our tackle. <laughs> You know, whether in your boat or your tackle bag or at home hanging on the pegs, like we're tackle junkies mm -hmm. and uh, we're collectors. And so, you know, again, just supporting the small guy, the local guy doesn't mean you still can't buy the Kitek or throw the Kitek because even the lead anglers, the professional anglers, same thing. I mean, yeah, they're tied to, to a sponsor and they're throwing those mm -hmm. things, but they're also throwing the jackhammer. They're throwing yeah. these other brands yeah. and manufacturers why because to your point you just said to catch fish mm -hmm. and that to me is what's important too it's and not just about spending money but you're going to spend money on something that's going to support you but it's also it will work to your point it's going to catch fish yeah, and usually the baits that catch fish they're not there's nothing flashy about no, them right not. um yeah i'm i'll i sell um uh jig heads number one and number two um size hooks eighth ounce sixteenth ounce mm -hmm. you know um i can make them in three sixteenth uh, uh, one thirty second. Mm -hmm. I I throw as well, mm -hmm. but nothing nothing fancy. You wouldn't believe how versatile a ball head jig is. Mm -hmm. Correct. You can use it for a Ned rig. Correct. A swim bait, a tube. That's right. I mean, and those are your three um, big mm -hmm. smallmouth baits right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. and that's they right. catch fish. No, that that's another good point too for somebody just starting out. Like it's Keep you know it you're, you're doing a hook for the exact for this lure, and it's I mean it, we can get really detailed, but mm -hmm. when you're first starting out, you don't want to have to buy four different packs of hooks for the four different you know packages mm -hmm. of baits you got. If you find one that can do all, I think there's there's yeah. a lot to be said to that. Yeah, so. the, the packs of baits I'll sell will have ten baits in them each, mm -hmm. and the jig heads I'll sell they'll have ten in there. So mm -hmm. if you bought the pack of mm -hmm. jig heads and a pack of baits. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have mm -hmm. one jig head per bait, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the, uh, the they'll be priced uh, uh, affordably, mm -hmm. and I mean, they're they work. I mean, if there's yeah. no other way around it. I mean, mm -hmm. and I think so. We'll that'll be coming soon, and we'll be sure to let people know yeah. when it yeah, does come out. Uh, check his website out; you'll be able to see it there. Get his newsletter; you'll know then. And, you know, just this idea that it's a shared concept. And again, you know, what you start is a good thing because there's nothing like this in this area, uh, kind of networking and getting the information out there. So mm -hmm. people that, that may, might be interested can tap mm -hmm. into that. And, and I'll, I'll eventually and, carry name, uh, some other name brand mm -hmm, stuff too, mm -hmm. but I, I have to get into it slow mm -hmm. and, uh, see where it takes me. Yeah, sure. and, and then again, guys, like, um, speaking from fishing the DMV part of it, since, you know, this is, I, I can speak for it because it is mine. You know, we're a platform, so I want to hear everyone's opinions. So if you, if we have somebody on the show or, or whatever it goes about, it doesn't matter. I let anybody who wants to come on the show talk about what they want to talk about and whatever brands. I'm not brand loyal here because my, my point is to be a platform to serve this area and this greater area to bring information together. You know, I feel like a lot of the different things, whether it's trout fishermen or bluegill fishermen or musky fishermen, they all stay in their little pockets and they don't try to network information because we're mm -hmm. all trying to preserve the resource that we have especially if you grow up in dc like i have you know loudon county used to just be woods and water and now it looks like california and mm -hmm. we have this growing out and before you know it we're going to lose all these natural resources that we don't come together and be like hey wilson let us help grow the future of this mm -hmm. sport by being more open by talking to them not hiding spots because if people don't catch fish if you don't get to shoot your first deer, you're mm -hmm. not going to become a hunter. That's right. No. And so you got to be able to understand, like, mm -hmm. unless you get a little bit more open and embrace mm -hmm. people. Like, All I right. know, like, some of the death threats I got from, like, doing the Kanaka Jig video. It's like, guess what? Unless you do stuff like this, you're not going to get new fishermen involved mm -hmm. into the sport. Mm -hmm. And so if anyone wants to be on this show, you know, please feel free to reach out to Jared or Jenny at Jake's Bait and Tackle or reach out to me at aaronsbassin at gmail.com. And I'll try to get you on the show with the time I have. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about what you want to talk about. Because that's the whole point mm -hmm. of this is to grow this whole mm -hmm. culture that we have of community. Yeah. And I think, you know, a couple other guests we're looking forward to. Brian Schmidt, I'm mm -hmm. uh, going to reach out to him. But he's, he's going to be here on April 23rd. He's a Maryland guy also. And uh, April 23rd, he'll be here in the 
shop, kind of a meet and greet, but he's also going to do three different seminars. So mm-hmm. a great way to, you know, get information. Um, so he'll be on. And then Ryan Freehand is, he's a Virginia Tech uh, angler, hokey angler, senior. Mm-hmm. He and his partner just recently won the Collegiate State Tournament on Smith Mountain Lake. And they're now going to national. So we're going to yep. try to get him on like a call in just to kind of share information. He's been in to share information with our kids, our youth. Um, so that's kind of like, again, what to your point, and you're doing a lot of different things too, by showing by out, actually out on the water, showing different things, techniques and stuff like mm-hmm. that. You're doing a lot of different live feeds now, Saturday mornings. And I have no getting, life <laughs> getting a following on that, but, but kind of like to what you did, you know, uh, as far as follow kind of a, a dream, a passion or whatever, like that's what you're doing here now, Thomas, is that's something you've you know wanted to do and decided to do and you've stepped out and done it. And so, um, but to piggyback off what you said uh that is the key there's a lot there's it takes time but there's a lot of time Mm -hmm. and it's a matter of just being that central hub and platform for all things fishing um to be able to come on here and learn something and i still say same thing happened today learn something new today that i didn't know from from that's the mission statement and i have have one other thing to add to those two questions you asked me um a few minutes ago about goals. Mm-hmm. Another goal is to uh, be more open-minded about the baits that I'm using, mm-hmm. because um, in order to be a well-rounded fisherman, you have to be uh, be able to use everything. Mm-hmm. You know, you should be able to learn how to I drop like shot mm-hmm. tube. Um, a mm-hmm. lot of people don't know how to use tubes, um, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm guilty of that. I guarantee you, mm-hmm. if you teach yourself how to use a tube and you become proficient with it, mm-hmm. you're going to catch more fish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that tube can be fished 365 days a year. Mm-hmm. So, right. yeah, that's but good. But it, it's uh, in order to be a good fisherman, you have to be well rounded, well rounded mm-hmm. in what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> whether it's lake fishing, river fishing, those are two different, completely different animals. Mm-hmm. And I don't fish water that I don't, I don't guide on, because it doesn't help me, mm-hmm. my guide service, mm-hmm. right. So mm-hmm. I'm, fi- I'm either fishing, um, four different, there's four different rivers I fish and, uh, that's it. Mm-hmm. But I want to be open-minded to anything mm-hmm. that comes around that's that good. might catch more fish. Mm-hmm. Well, that's Jeff, good yeah. th- thank you so much for coming on today, guys. Uh, please again, give him a follow, support this individual right here, support this man, um, uh, listen to his newsletter and we will see you guys next time on fishing the DMV. And, uh, real quick too, mm-hmm. there's no other way to get better fishing than spending time on the water amen nothing it doesn't matter what tackle what boat you have it doesn't matter if you fish from the shore Mm -hmm. uh the more time you put on the water uh the more time or the more um uh the more fish you're going to catch the more you're going to learn the more you're going to learn the better you're going to be um but yeah time on the water Mm -hmm. nothing nothing there's nothing that there's no places that podcast or books or youtube videos or all that's great but till you get yeah. on the water and apply that yep. that's when you start learning and uh and i found too advice. that um the guides that i come across the people i know the people even the guides that guides that i'll fish with sometimes we all have a completely different style yeah that's mm-hmm. right of how it, we it approach is like, it and because yeah. it's so so cool is like like Again, this is what I all I love about this sport is we can attack it four different ways a yeah, Sunday. Right. Everyone has another approach. And the thing is, like look at the pro tournaments. You could have the top four, all of them doing something different, but yet it was all basically correct because mm. they all cashed a the check. They all mm. finished in the top four. Mm. And that to me what it blows my mind. Is there's there's no wrong way and there's mm. a bunch of right ways. It's just I don't know. It's mm. it's so cool. Well, and the fact that you're open to that, I mean we had Ray and Randy on who won at Lake Anna that Shando Valley bass and at seventy, sixty eight and seventy years old. They're kind of saying the same thing, where they're they're being open minded to, yeah. you He's know, on YouTube. There, there's a different, yeah, there's a little different way of doing. Yeah, I mean, this that open minded thing even goes to the YouTube doing yeah. videos. Maybe yeah. one day I'll try to yeah. do mm-hmm. do um regular videos mm-hmm. on how to use certain baits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. you know, it's wide open. It is. So, so. well, thank you. We'll be in touch, and, uh, and we'll, we'll see, you see you guys next, next time. time. Yeah. See you guys. Thanks, guys. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host Thomas Aaron's and jared mounts fishing the dmv is brought to you by jake's bait and tackle located in winchester virginia if that doesn't get you jacked up i don't know what will